Uh, my name is Craig Lamont. I'm a reporter here at GBH News. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today, we're going to be learning about magic, one of my favorite subjects with magician John Duke Logan. Uh, thanks to everybody who's joining us today, including our leadership circle and RLS members. Uh, we appreciate your continued generous support. Uh, before we get started, I, I want to say uh, how this is going to work a little bit. Um, unlike us, you're not going to be on video. We won't be able to hear or see you, but we do want your questions. They really shape our conversation today. Uh, so if you have a question uh, to ask John Duke Logan, our magician, all you have to do is open the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and type it in. Uh, we'd love to know where you're tuning in from, so, so tell us uh, where you're watching this event from. Also, if you see a question that you want the answer to, uh, give it a thumbs up. Those questions that have the most thumbs up that people really want the answers to go to the top of the list for us. So we'll really make sure to get to uh, the, uh, the questions that most people want answers to. Um, also wanna let you know we have a closed captioning feature. If you'd like that, you can just click live transcript at the bottom of your screen. Uh, two transcription display options are gonna pop up. Uh, we recommend you hit uh, subtitle. Um, that'll give you captioning at the bottom of your screen. You can also select full transcript. Um, a sidebar window will open up where you can see what each speaker is saying. Um, it, please bear in mind, it, 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 there's a slight delay on, on the transcript. All right, now, without further ado, I want to introduce John Duke Logan. Uh, John has been performing magic for the past 15 years. He was nicknamed the team magician for the New England Patriots. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit more about that, I think, shortly. Um, he's the author of two books. Uh, he got a standing ovation on America's Got Talent. He's, he's a really unique magician. And, and beyond performing tricks, he teaches his audience members about the psychology of how easily our minds can be fooled. He also founded uh, the Impossible is Just a Word leadership program, which focuses on how others can uh, bringing a sense of wonder and curiosity and inspiration to the world. So uh, with, with, that, with all of that, John, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's really great to have you here. No, thanks for having me. This is, uh, this is awesome. I, I appreciate you having me. It's going to be a really fun event today. And uh, I, always, I always love all the events you, you, uh, you put on. So I'm very honored to be here. Awesome. Well, thanks. It's great to talk to you. So I guess just speaking with John, can you tell us a little bit about your magic? What it is that you do? And I don't know, maybe can you show us something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, I'll start off with something kind of cool. Um, now, I know uh, things are opening up now, vaccinations and, you know, people having more events now and we can travel now, which, which is really, really cool. So kind of in celebration of that, I figured we could go on a little uh, imaginary trip. Is, is that cool? Sounds cool. good to me. Now, correct. Now we never, I just want to confirm, you just know I'm going to perform something. You have no idea what I'm going to perform. We didn't talk beforehand, nothing like that, right? I just want we to confirm I, that. I do not know what's coming next. Okay, cool. So I actually got a bunch of postcards just to make it easy, easy for us to, uh, to pick our destination trip. And you're going you're gonna to choose a destination. So if people don't like the trip, we can blame you. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have, uh, we have Canada here. We have whatever. We have Australia. I'll just go through a bunch of them first before we do on uh, Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong, uh, Moscow, uh, what we, Florida. So we have all of the, all these cool uh, destinations we can go to. Now I'm going to mix these up because I want mm -hmm. to be completely random. You just say stop and, and I'll stop mixing them up. All right. So I'll just mix them up. I'll just give them a few cuts. You just say stop whenever you want. Okay. Right there. Stop. Stop. I'm going to complete this. So you want me to put this back on the top? It's totally up to you. I want to put it uh, on top. Put it back on top. Put, okay. Perfect. Now to make this even more fair, I'm going to deal out one by one and you just say stop again. Okay. okay. Stop. Right there? Okay. Yep. So one that's in my hand, we have uh, France. Love okay, it. so I get, we're going to France. I like it. I like it. We're going Great. to France. Let's Perfect. pack our bags. Perfect. Now, uh, you said that we're packing our bags. Now, what season are we going to go to France? Are we going to go in the spring, summer, fall, or winter? Where, where do you want to, when do you want to go? Let's go right now. Let's go in the spring. Go in the spring. Perfect. Perfect. Um, it is, it is funny that you decided to, uh, after we mixed them up, you said stop, we dealt them out, you said stop, uh, and you stopped at France, and you stopped in, an, or you said in the spring, uh, which, is, which is weird, because uh, I got a call the other day, and I told you that things are opening up, and they're yeah. booking events for 2022, and I actually got a call that they want me to do a keynote in France uh, in April of 2022. Awesome. 
You don't believe me. I, I knew you wouldn't believe me. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Um, so actually, uh, or something down here. France in the spring. There you go. There it is. There it is. There it is. So thank, Very... thanks, for, thanks for, for helping out there. I guess we're all going to go on a little trip together. I like, hey, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. And that was, that's great. Um, awesome. John, uh, I'm not even going to ask you how you, how you did that. Uh, but I think today we are going to talk a little bit about how, how to actually do some tricks, right? Like, uh, and, and, and I, I think that, that, you know, people watching will actually kind of maybe learn how to do a, a few tricks uh, yeah. today. So that, that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm, and I've been reading your book, by the way, which also has uh, a, like a ton of amazing tricks that I can learn to do. And, and I mentioned, I think before that I'm, I'm a bit of a hack magician myself. I'm not like, I'm not, you know, I'm not serious about it, but uh, I, I love it. And I do it for my friends. I do it for my friends' kids. And it's something that I enjoy too. So I'm really excited to learn some tricks from you today. Yeah. Before we do that, can, can you tell me a little bit about like, I, I want to hear about your story. Like, how did you get into this? I mean, how, how did you become, you know, the magician that you are today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've always, you know, growing up, I always kind of liked uh, magic tricks and stuff like that. And I remember, remember I was at a bookstore one day. It was, we had a little scholastic book fair at school. And I think I was, I was seven years old. My mom told me to, that I have to go uh, get a book because I, I didn't like to read, read back then. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all there in the back room, all frustrated. I, I don't want to be there, right? And, uh, but I see in this corner, I see this uh, fun magic coloring book. So actually, this is one of the first tricks I've ever seen. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I like fun. I like to have fun. I like magic. I like coloring. One, two, three, I like it. Okay, it all equals up. Pretty good. Um, so, I, so I open up the package. I get back home. I said, mom, I got a book. And she says, John, I want you to get like a real book. And she was like, you didn't say what type of book, right? So, so anyway, so we, so I open it up, I'm about to color in the pictures and I realized that uh, all the pictures are blank, all the pages are blank, right? So I was kind of upset. I was seven years old. I was like, I want to color in some pictures here. You know, I, w w what's going on? I thought I was going to be coloring in some cool pictures, right? So I go back to the book fair the next day and I say, uh, Bobby, the guy who ran the bookstore, I said, uh, you gave me a, a blank book. How am I supposed to color in the, the pictures, right? And he said, no, no, John, you have to use your imagination. I said, what do you mean? He said, okay, left up your left finger. So Craig, actually lift up your left finger for me. Left up your left finger. Yeah, perfect. Now on three, what I want you to do is uh, point at the screen and say the word impossible. Okay, on, th on three, ready? One, okay. two, three. Impossible. Perfect, just like then you actually see now that the pictures appear. Pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. So that was Love the it. first trick I, I ever saw. I was about seven years old and I was, I was at a bookstore. And uh, so I went back the next day. I was so fascinated by this. I said, so Bobby, you have to teach me more, you know, some more tricks. I said, okay, okay, I'll teach you one more. Um, so right, lift up your right finger for me, Craig. Lift up your right finger. Perfect. Now, again, on three, I want you to point at the book and say the word uh, impossible. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Impossible. Perfect. And just like that, we see that the pick, the colors appear in the pictures, right? So, so I saw that trick and I was, uh, I was fascinated by it. I, I was, I was yeah. hooked ever since. And so that's, that's one of the first tricks I ever saw, I ever learned. And, uh, you know, so growing up, I've always been kind of into, into magic and into, into things like that. And, uh, it's funny, you know, I don't do a lot of kids, kids tricks, but, uh, or kids shows, but adults seem to love that, love that trick I just did. It's just, it's just so funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, growing up, I was really into creativity and building things and stuff like that. So I remember, it, my magic career kind of took off per se when I was 12 years old. I was really bored at my uh, aunt's birthday party, and uh, I went in the other room and I started making just making up magic tricks. I said, "I'm bored. I'm just gonna make some tricks up," and I, I created a few of them. I went back home uh, that next day or that night, and I just just put a camera and I just filmed myself performing the tricks, and I threw them up on YouTube. <clears throat> and a few days later, a talent agency reached out to me and they said, you know, John, you know, uh, how are you doing these tricks? And the funny thing is that my face wasn't in the video. So they didn't know how old I was. Only my hands were in the video. Right. So they said, uh, well, John, do you want to be a, a, a creative consultant? I said, what's a creative consultant? And they said, well, we'll, we'll pay you to develop magic tricks for David Blaine and David Copperfield and Penn and Teller and all, and all these, all these, all these cool magicians and consult with their team and stuff like that. So I said, uh, yeah, let me just finish up my homework. Then I'll ask my mom about it. <laughs> so it, it, it took off from there. So, so I was very lucky at a young age um, to kind of have that little creative spark. And they, they, I guess they saw something in me, in me as well. And they couldn't figure out the tricks I was doing. The, the ones, but that's, the that's incredible. I mean, like, just for a second, 
<laughs> you, you were just starting out. Like these are the first tricks that you really had ever created. And your initial reaction the guy, is they want you to, you got, a, you got a job out of the first couple of gigs and you're 12 years old. Like that's, that's insane. Yeah, I was, I was very lucky uh, to, you know, to, uh, for, for that opportunity, opportunity to happen to me. I was very lucky at a young age to, to be around different magicians and different consultants and learning about the industry uh, and how to do, you know, move your hand to the right rather than the left. You know, these little, little things that other people really wouldn't think of. I was very, very lucky at a young age to, to be mentored by some of these really well-known magicians and and to kind of consume all that knowledge, knowledge, and uh, it, it kind of took off from there. So uh, it ended up, I ended up, uh, you know, writing, writing a book. And I was on America's Got Talent, and uh, one thing led to another. I was kind of nicknamed uh, by the media, the team magician for the for the New England Patriots. Um, I think some people may, may recognize my name from there. So a few years ago, I had my own show with the players. So essentially, they came came down to the studio, and uh, I performed a trick to them, and they would just. It was really fun. They were blasted on social media and TV, and um, and it's, it, was, it was great. It was great, but it was funny because that that experience performing for the Patriots players was really unique in terms of it was actually really hard in the creative process uh, for me because I wanted to perform tricks that no one has ever seen before, right? So essentially, I had five minutes with the players. I performed the tricks, and uh, you know they, they were blasted and, and stuff like that. But I wanted to do tricks that no one has ever seen before um, that they haven't seen before audience members haven't seen before. So I had to develop these tricks, you know, like, like a machine, you know uh, the weird thing about that is that I was performing these tricks to them and I didn't know if they were good or not. Right. Cause I've never performed them before. So a lot of the tricks I was doing on, on the show was brand new tricks. I didn't even know if they were good or not. I didn't even know how they would react. Uh, it is, you know, it was, it was really funny. And then I wanted to theme theme the tricks around the players too. So I, w- I didn't want the, tr- the show to be about me. I wanted to be about the players. I want the fans to learn about the players in a unique way. You know, like, for instance, you know, at the time, Chris Long was on the team and he had a nonprofit uh, helping helping water, uh, clean water in Africa. So I talked about that. Uh, Patrick Chung is originally from Jamaica. So I put that in the show. So it was, it was really, I was using it as a way for the fans to learn about the players. Sure. The yeah. funny thing is, yeah, the, f- the funny thing is that I wouldn't even, sometimes I wouldn't know who the player would be, or the guest would be until like the night before before I'm, I'm filming. So it was, I've had a lot of sleepless nights, you know, uh, I have a consultant named, named Stathi Zaff, you know, him, him and I were stay up all night trying to develop a brand new, brand new trick uh, for this, for this player that we didn't know who it was going to be. And also at the same time, uh, I had to perform tricks that people couldn't rewind the video and try to figure it out too. Yeah. It's, right. It's video. Right. So there were a lot of these, a lot of these barriers or not barriers, a lot of these obstacles I was trying to overcome d- doing the show, which it was really fun. It really enhanced my creativity a lot. And, uh, and it, it was, it was a blast. It was a blast. That's yeah. great. I want to remind the audience that uh, we really want to hear your questions for, for John. So please go into the, the Q and a chat and, and, and type in any questions that you have. Um, and we'll be getting to those in, in just a minute. Um, uh, John, I mean, how, how did the Patriots thing happen? Like that's like that you got, you know, you were pretty well known as the, the Patriots magician for a while there. Um, I know it wasn't like an official designation, right? But, but like you, you did a lot with the team. How did that actually come about? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, I was actually right out of college. I went to Bryant University. I was right out of college, class of 2016. And I was just looking for a job. And uh, I really, I'm, you know, other than doing magic, I'm really into uh, video and graphic design work, digital content, digital, digital marketing, stuff like that. And they had a position open at the Patriots, uh, the digital content associate. And then I think that was the title. And uh, essentially the job description was just interacting with the players, taking pictures of them, interviewing them, posting pictures on the website, um, you know, making graphics, things like that, you know, stuff that's right, right up my alley. So I just applied and all my resume, it said that I was a magician. So they were like, so they asked us, asked more about it. And then uh, their creative team, I mean, most people think it was me that developed the idea. It wasn't me, it was them. They, they said, let's, would you want your own show with the player that we think would be really cool for content? Cool. Said, right. Sure. If you want me to, sure. So that's kind of how it all, how it all happened. And it was uh, kind of one opportunity led to another, which led to another, um, you know, Malcolm Mitchell, uh, he, when he was on the team, he, he was a wide receiver. And uh, so he, he, does a lot of keynote talks as well about um, uh, you know, literacy and stuff like that. So I actually went on tour with him because we did a whole magic themed and Todd Gurley, him and Todd, uh, me, Malcolm, 
and, and talk really we, we went to travel all over the country doing it so it was it was really really fun it was really fun yeah great i want to so I, so people are already asking uh for, for more magic from you and i think i want that too <laughs> uh, and i think what i'd love if, if you wouldn't mind is if you could uh maybe show us a little a little something in terms of, of how how you actually do it i think it'd be great to learn yeah. uh tricks but before we kind of do that i think i think that anybody who learns magic tricks uh, has to learn sort of the, the ground rules, right? There's some rules yeah. about performing magic. First of all, what, what, are the, what, are the, what do people need to know? What, what yeah. should they do? And what, should they, what should they more importantly not do? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So, um, well, the, you have the classic ones, like don't perform a trick more than once for the same audience because right. they can figure it out, right? So that's kind and of- And every time classic, I've yeah. ever done a trick, especially for kids, they say, do it again, do it again. It's, it's the yeah. first thing they say, and I'm like, sorry, them rules. Like, can't do <laughs> yep. the trick twice. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, another another rule that I've learned through experience that most people, this isn't the first rule that pops into their head, is a lot of magicians make this mistake as well. Is they perform too much magic. Hmm. So, in other words, in their show, you want you want them to leave. You want the audience members to leave your show wanting more, One right? More. A lot of magicians will just do trick, 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 and just keep perform for an hour of nonstop magic yeah. and show everything they have, right? So that, that's another thing I have, you know, don't perform all your, all your tricks for the people. So kind of, uh, that because that, it kind of loses the magic, no pun intended. Yeah, and, uh, but you, people are yeah. also going to ask, like, how did you do it, right? Like, I mean, and, and you're about to tell us like, some tricks. If people perform this trick, this next trick for you, uh, and people say, you know, how'd you do it? What's the answer? There's, there's, there's a lot of different uh, weight ways you can do it. Uh, one way is you can, you can say, oh, I teach it in my book. You can buy my book, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that works. And, yep, that, that works as well. Um, sometimes I'll be like, I really have no idea how it works either. You know, you, 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 just, you just got go like that. Um, so there's different ways. Um, sometimes when, you know, some, sometimes people talk about hecklers. Uh, so hecklers yeah. uh, is a term uh, in magic or kind of anything in the industry where a person isn't really participating in the right way. They're trying to mess you up. They're, yeah. they're calling you out and stuff like that. Um, what I've learned over the years is actually, this is kind of a rule of thumb that I have, is a, a lot of magicians will try to prove the hecklers wrong. I don't take that approach. I take it that I want them to be on my side. Mm, yeah, win them over. Yeah, win them over. So a heckler, so if a heckler says, oh, I know how you did it, most magicians would be like, okay, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Let me, let me do it again. I'll do it even better this time. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. So I'm, I'm more of the, the person that says, okay, if you're, if you're a heckler, right. You don't want to be fooled. Right. You want it. You want, you don't want that embarrassment of other people knowing that you're fooled. Right. You want to be on kind of the magician side. Right. So I, yeah. so even if they say, oh, I know how you did it. Say, oh, okay. Oh, you do. Like, don't, don't say anything. Don't ruin the magic for everyone else. It'll be all a little secret. Yeah. Right. Good. Nice. Right? It's better and, for win. Exactly. And they could be way, maybe they have no idea how I'm pulling it off. But by me saying that, it actually brings us like to the same level psychologically. And then they're like, oh yeah, I'm friends with the magician now. I'm not, I'm right. It kind of diffuses it a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. So all right, I, all right. Yeah. can you teach us yeah. something? Teach us a this trick here. This is awesome. So this is a cool trick. Um, here, uh, I'm, I, know, I know you can't really choose a card, but I'm just going to go down. You just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Right there. Okay. Now I'm not, I'm not going to look, but can you see that card? Okay. I can't, let's see. Yeah, I can, I can't make out the numbers a little bit closer. Uh, a little bit. There you go. I got it. All right. Thank you. Got it. Okay, cool. Now I'm just going to put it, uh, I'll just put it right on top like that. Okay. Now, again, as a, as a, I can perform this, but the, the audience member can actually do this as well. Okay. So that you have them put it back on top. You cut the deck, you say, cut wherever you want, about half of it. Take this, put it right on top. Now the card's lost in the middle somewhere. Right. Lost in the middle, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to deal out the cards one by one onto the table. And in your mind, when you see your card, just yell stop. In your mind, don't say anything out loud, though, okay? No, don't say anything out loud. Only in okay. your mind, you say stop, okay? You say stop over here. The three of spades. Is that your card? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Now, 
Now, now that's a trick uh, that anyone can do. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite tricks uh, of all time. Actually, it's a, it's a very simple trick, uh, but with the right presentation, it can it can it can uh, you can fool a lot of people with it. Um, now, this is actually the first chapter of my book, and uh, here's, here's a secret. Well, I'll just I'll just tell you how how I do it. The secret is I put there's a little prep, there's a little little preparation beforehand, but it shouldn't take you more than like ten seconds. Um, mm -hmm. You take I take the a black four. And I put it on top. So the four okay. spades and I put it on top. And I take the four clubs and I put it on the bottom. Okay. And that's the secret right there. Yeah. So when you take out a card, so I do that before before I perform the trick. Now they take out a card, they can take out truly any card they want. I won't look, when in this case, like the King of Diamonds, it's okay if I see it, King of Diamonds. And I say, okay, I want you to put the card right on top. They put it on top. Now look what they're doing here. They're actually putting it on top of one of the black fours. And then I say, pick up around half the deck to pick it up. And I say, now put the bottom half on top. So now your card's sandwiched in the middle. Now, if you yeah. think about it, the between bottom is the other four. four. Yeah. They pop it right on top. And I now know that their card is in between the black fours. Yep. So I just can, I can deal the cards. I can fan them out. I can just fan out. I can just, okay, I know the two black fours. I know the king of diamonds there. You can deal them out. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, so it's just a cool, it's a cool trick. Uh, it's the first first trick in my book and so it's, it's a really simple trick to to perform but it so fools easy. a lot of people it fools yeah. a lot a lot of people yeah 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 um, but it, again it can be the two black fours i just use it can be any cards technically but i used to use two cards that i can easily remember like the, a pair or something like that but yeah we have a question from ellen which i think is a great question uh which is how do other magicians feel about a performer who reveals a, a trick or a secret right you're you're actually teaching magic, uh, teaching magic to us right now, um, does it dull anything in terms of the, 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 the magic of it if people uh, know, you know what's going on? That's, that's a great question. And I think it all depends on what the trick is. Uh, the trick I just taught you is a really, um, it's a kind of a beginner trick. And I feel like a lot of magicians, if you're watching this, they probably won't, won't get mad that I taught that trick. Yeah, right. Um, if, if I did teach her like a signature, maybe sawing someone in half or a, a, a famous trick or, or a trick that a lot of magicians do perform in their shows, yeah, you get a little mad. But that's kind of the paradox of magic, right? A lot of people say don't reveal magic tricks, but then if you don't reveal magic tricks, how do people become magicians, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's kind of a, a paradox there. But um, I think that's the right word. Irony, paradox, I don't know the right phrase, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so it, it all depends on what the trick actually is. A lot of tricks I'll teach um, are beginner tricks or the tricks I don't do in my shows because if I'm going to teach someone a trick I want them to be able to perform it right I remember um, when I first wrote my book I was teaching all these tricks but they're really complex tricks and I said wait a minute I, people can't perform these what's the point of writing this book if people can't perform them right so yeah I took a, I took a step back and I wrote things that people can actually actually perform it as, as a beginner so I, I have um, some magic books yeah. and I can't do any of the tricks in the magic books because like it's uh, I actually find videos to be more helpful because I can actually see it but yeah. your, your your book actually does a really good job and there's photos of, yeah. of how to actually handle the cards or whatever it is so that I found actually the tricks in your book to be doable Cool. Uh, we have a question. Uh, I want to get yeah. to the questions because we have a lot of great questions coming in. Yeah. Um, Dave asks, has the prevalence of video and the ease of recording on phones made it more difficult to keep the secrets of tricks or, or does the psychology still overwhelm non-magicians? That, that's a great question. Um, so it depends on, on, on the context of what you're referring to. Um, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll take it one route and then if, I, if I'm going the wrong route, just, just let me know and I'll take a different route. Um, so in terms of social media, uh, a lot of magicians now are performing tricks on social media, um, you know, because of our attention spans are so short, you know, I'm surprised that people are still on right now, right? Uh, we have a 10 second, 10 second attention span nowadays. So a lot of tricks now are very, that people post on social media are very quick visual tricks, right? Yeah. Quick visual uh, magic tricks. The issue with that, in my opinion, is that a lot of you, a lot of those quick tricks that you see can't be performed live because of angles or because of a yeah. lot of different other reasons, right? Right. So and right so, now, I mean, I mean, the pandemic, most a lot of magic is happening virtually, you know, by yeah. a, virtually, right? I mean, is that yeah. you know, and, and that definitely changes. It's different than being in front of an audience, right? It, yeah, it is. So it's it's a really tough boundary between trying to stay relevant with technology and 
social media and people using, you know, phones and, and doing tricks with phones and blending that line of people be like, oh, well, the technology did it, or it's an app that it's a magic app, right? Yeah. Or, oh, when you cut the camera, that's when you did the mad, that's when you did some secret move that we can't see, right? So it's a really blurred line. And I'm personally afraid of what direction we're going to be going in the magic industry uh, is going in because it's very easy to, you know, if I had another camera set up here, right. And I have two cameras. That's why I like to use one camera. Cause if I had another camera set up here, I can be doing something here and I didn't switch something out or something over here. Right. And mm -hmm. now magicians do that. Right. Is that ethical? It depends who you ask. It depends who you ask. Right. So, um, so that's kind of where I'm, I'm at right now. I'm afraid that the magic industry may be going into in a direction where it's really about clicks and views and shares and stuff like that versus actually like the organic magic of people reacting, doing it live and, and stuff like that. So it, as an audience member, though, yeah. there's nothing quite like being to seeing a trick done in front of you. It's so much more powerful if it's yeah. if it's happened immediately in front of you. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Like I, I've been doing virtual shows, right? And uh, I, you know, all magicians had to adapt to virtual shows. I know some magicians who were doing virtual shows, multiple virtual shows a day, uh, wow. which which is crazy, you know. And and they love it. Me personally, if if you ever come to, to come to my to come to my live show, I'm very interactive. I throw things in the audience. I dance. I get people stand up. It's a really interactive, fun, high energy, enthusiastic show. Mm it's very hard to adapt that when I have this little screen yes, here, right? It's not the same. So it worked with some magicians. I've had to adapt my show a lot uh, virtually. You know, I can't do tricks like that. Even the trick I just did to you where I had you memorize a card, right? Uh, I can't really do those types of tricks because I could easily just have another monitor right here on the side yeah. off camera and I'm just looking at it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, uh, so I've had to adapt my show a lot, um, do more visual things and, and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, like, like you said, Craig, it's, there's nothing like a live organic magic Perfect. show. I, it's, I love it. Yeah. We have a, a question from Ken, uh, a great question, which is, do you ever make a mistake when you're doing a trick and have to cover it up? Um, uh, I, I can tell you, uh, from, I, I have done this many times and I would love the answer to, if you have, how, how do you cover it up? Yeah. If, if a magician ever, if you ask that magician that question, and if a magi magician ever says they've never messed up, they're lying to you. Uh, <laughs> it's we, I would be definitely lying if I, if I said I, I never messed up in during a, during a live performance, there's a few ways to cover it up. Um, one way that I like to do is if I do mess up, I'll be like, wow, but how amazing would that be if that actually worked? Right. And you spin it off as a joke. Like it wasn't supposed to work. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, another way, uh, to do, to do it is actually just completely just admit it and be like, be like, man, that's a new trick. I need to work on that or something like that. Right. And that I actually, I found that actually how that it, people may feel like, Oh, why would you say that? But it actually builds like transparency between you yeah. and the audience and people are like, yeah. Oh, wow, wow. That's actually, it, it just build, makes you more human, I guess. Um, so, so yeah, there's, there's different ways. What I like to do is if there is a new trick that, that I've never done before, I like to call it the sandwich effect. So you put it in between two tricks that you know really well. <laughs> right. So if you, so they, so you're going to perform a trick, trick one, you know, it like the back of your hand, you perform it in it, 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 people, it gets great reactions, right? Then you do the trick that you've never done before. And then you do a trick that again, you know, it gets great reactions because if you mess yeah. up on that second trick, you know that they just saw a great trick and you know they're about to see another great trick, right? Right, um, yeah. So that's the way to do it. Um, and again, it just, the more you perform a trick, the more you you see the gaps of where it could go wrong, right? So I think that's a, that's one thing. The more if you perform a trick, the, the more you can say, okay, well, they could go wrong here. So what can I have yeah. to do the next time to adapt? And right? they do go wrong for sure. I think I, oh, that's what definitely. I just said, like, well, that didn't work. Let's try this. And, and they just try to, and hope they forget the thing that didn't work, you know, yeah. and they'll remember the thing that was sort of surprising to them. Uh, exactly. Ted wants to know who your, who your favorite magician is and why. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, uh, probably a, a guy named Justin Willman. Um, and pe pe people may recognize that name because he has a show on, on Netflix called Magic for Humans. And him oh, and I, have, yeah, yeah he's, he's great. Him and I have a very similar approach to magic where, you know, we, we don't, 
we're, we're very modern day. We, we borrow things from the audience. We make fun of like pop culture. We use things that we can, um, you know, everyday items. We don't really use a lot of gimmicks or props and stuff like that. And that's what I think magic should be all about doing extraordinary things with ordinary objects. That's kind of my definition of magic. Um, but yeah, it's actually funny. Justin, um, I think he was like, maybe like 15 years old or something. You know, he, he's, I want to say he's maybe 10 years older than me. So maybe I was five or seven, I don't know. But I was at a birthday party. And uh, he was at the, he was at the party. No one really knew what his name was. His name was just incredible. His last, he changed his name to credible and he had an Afro. It was funny. And uh, so I've known him for a long time and we just connected then. And I've seen him kind of, I've seen his career growth. He's seen mine. So he, he, he's probably one of, one of my favorite magicians. Yeah. I've seen his show magic for humans. It's awesome. It's a, yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. Yeah. He's uh, awesome. Fred is asking for more tricks. And I, I think, you know, do, do you have another one that you might be able to do for us? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me, um, I'll teach you something that's kind of cool. Uh, so if you have a dollar bill, this is actually a great way to, um, a great icebreaker at, if you're at a party or something like that. So if you have a dollar bill, right, and uh, you can borrow this dollar bill. And I want you to say at no time am I going to turn the bill upside down. Okay, no time am I going to turn the bill upside down. But I want you to watch uh, George Washington's handsome face right there. I'm going to fold it long ways like this. Mm -hmm. I fold it across, fold it across again. And I open it up and it's upside down now. Right. Right. Now, some of you are like, huh, can I say that again? I'll, I'll do it one more time. I'll do it one more time. So I take it, I fold it long ways like this, across, across, open up, and he's upside down. Now, it's not really a magic trick. It's just a really cool icebreaker. Oh, how, how'd you do it, right? But over the years, people, I was doing that at parties and people were like, well, well John, like, kind of self-working i performed like again i broke the rule of magic i performed it a few times people realized it was self-working right so what i realized over the years i have to think of something a little bit better so what i figured out how to do is take the dollar bill fold it across fold it down fold it like this and right if i just shake it like that and i open it up you actually see now that the dollar bill is inside out that's pretty cool. wonderful pretty cool right pretty yeah. cool and uh, a lot of people, I, I'll, I'll borrow the dollar bill and say, well, John, I can't really buy anything with this. You know, can, can you put it back to normal, right? And I'll just take it, I'll, I'll just shake it again. It goes right back to normal. Nothing in my hands that's either. Great. I feel like people think of nothing in my hands either, nothing in my hands. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's one of my favorite tricks, favorite tricks to do. And, and that's what I always, I always try to keep a dollar bill in my, in my, in my wallet, you know, just to, just to do stuff like that. Or, you know, especially if you want to do something like that, you know, always keep a dollar bill in your wallet. You can do that folding, uh, that, that folding, folding trick. And I know over, over the years, people have said, uh, well, John, if you can fold a dollar bill, uh, inside out, why can't you just turn it into like a $20 bill or a $50 bill or something like that? I'm like, that's, that's a good point. It's a very yeah. good point. <laughs> so, so what I figured out how to do over the years, I said, well, if I want to catch them off guard, so what's better than a uh, an inside out bill, a five dollar bill, fifty dollar bill, twenty dollar bill is actually a uh... oh, it's a credit card like that. <laughs> that's a little, that's a little harder trick. That's why I just I, I uh, stumbled a little bit. So it's a little it's a hard trick, but but yeah. That's amazing. And, and a, a great, uh, you know, financial plan as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All right. Uh, so that one, that one, uh, you're not going to tell us how it's done today, right? I can't, there, I can't there, reveal that one. There's certain you're teaching us and then other ones you're just going to perform, right? That, that's not a, not a teaching one. No, I can't, I can't teach that one, but if you do want to learn tricks, um, so there's a type of magic called mentalism, which is uh, more kind of the mind reading and the predicting things, stuff like that. Kind of is very similar to like the one we did in the very beginning where we went on that the, the trip to, to France, you know, uh, uh, in the spring. So uh, that's, called, that's called mentalism. So if you want to get into that, this is called 13 Steps to Mentalism. It's, a, it's an old book, but it teaches all these, all these great tricks. Um, here's another book that if you do want to learn more tricks, um, this is actually the book kind of I grew up on. It's the Practical Encyclopedia of Magic by Nicholas Einhorn. Um, this is a really great book for, for beginners. Um, I would highly, highly recommend this. And it's really, it has a lot of pictures. So it's a history about magic. Um, it does everything from card tricks to rope tricks to big illusions. Um, so I definitely recommend recommend uh, get, getting that as well if you awesome. want to learn, learn some, uh, a, lot, a lot of tricks. Yeah. All right, we got a ton more great questions yeah. for, the, for the audience. Thank you guys for all of your questions. I'm going to take a quick moment here to introduce my colleague, Jamie, who's on the line. Uh, hey, Jamie. Hello there. 
Great event so far. I'm so enjoying learning all about these different magic tricks. And uh, thanks to our audience at home for spending some time with us um, this afternoon. So, you know, viewers and listeners turn to GBH for many reasons, whether it's to hear the latest news with Craig or to simply be entertained for a while. So if you feel or think that GBH News and Entertainment leaves you feeling spellbound, then please consider making a donation. Today, if you're able to give $60 all at once or $5 per month as a GBH sustainer, we will send you John's latest book. It's called The Perfect Illusion Life as a thank you gift from GBH. He's holding it right now for everyone to see. And this is a great book. It includes 20 magic tricks for beginners that helped shape John into the magician he is today. And John also shares some of his perspectives on life, uh, particularly the struggle between emotion and imagination. Sounds very, very deep, very interesting. So giving to GBH is so easy, almost like waving a magic wand and saying abracadabra support GBH. It's so easy and I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Simply go to gbh.org slash support events to make your donation. Every dollar donors give helps us provide more great free programs and events to the community. So simply click on that support link in the chat tab now, or you can text GBH to this number, 800-492-1111. That's again, 800-492-1111. Do you believe in the magic of GBH programming and its ability to educate, entertain, and inspire audiences? Well, if so, we ask you to please donate today in any amount to become a GBH sustainer. And your support helps make the magic happen at GBH here at our studios. Now more than ever, your, your support, your commitment to our station makes such a difference. So I hope everybody will, will take us up on the opportunity to support GBH to get John's amazing book. And with that, I will, uh, Turn it back to the second act of today's event with Craig and John. Awesome, thanks so much, Jamie. And uh, that's actually a really great uh, promotion here that if you, if you give now that you can get this book. John, I'm reading your book now. I love it. Uh, there's a, like a ton of tricks in here um, and they're not crazy hard. They're like, they're meant mm -hmm. for, for people like me who, uh, you know, I have, as I said, some other magic books. I, I, I can't do a lot of the tricks, most of the tricks in those books. These ones I can actually do. So um, it's, it's really great. I think people will really love it. It's awesome. Um, I, a ton of more questions here. Um, do you have a general approach to creating tricks? I think there's a, there's a, a difference between just sort of doing tricks and, and learning tricks and, and performing them to actually creating a new one. Um, there's a really creative process here. How, how, what's your approach? Yeah, it's funny you say that. So I did a, a lot of research on this. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to back it up a little bit and then answer the question. I'm going to create, create the context here. So uh, throughout performing magic over the years, I've realized that it's, it can be a really powerful uh, tool. You know, if, if I ask you, you know, when was the last time you saw a magician, right? You probably remember how the magi magician made you feel. You might remember what the trick was, but you probably won't remember the magician's name, right? So mm -hmm. why is it, why does it go like that? And I realize the power of magic. It's a feeling that people get, right? So after performing for a long time, I said, well, what can different business leaders actually learn from magicians in terms of how our creative process is? How do we develop tricks? How do we think differently? How do we have, you know, all, the, all that type of stuff? And how do we communicate with our audiences? Um, how do we kind of make a vision and have become a reality? Uh, and then the impossible become impossible. So I was very lucky. I, I have this here. I actually started this um, as, a, as a thesis capstone at, in school. And I pitched it, I pitched it to them and they said, yeah, we, this is actually a really cool idea. So they paid me to travel the country and live with some of these very famous magicians you know, for days. And I woke and I studied them. What do they do when they wake up? What do they do before they go to bed? How do they approach problems uh, and, and stuff like that. And that's actually what, you know, what my keynote is about right now. And uh, so I did about, I think there's about 200 pages here of literally the creative process of cool. magicians and how they develop ideas, um, what, other people that don't perform magic 
how they can apply it to their life as well. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really cool concept. Um, so that's we can talk about it like forever, but like in a, in a, yeah. in a, in a sentence, in two sentences, what's, yeah. the, what's the summary? Like how, how do you, how do you create a trip? Yeah, so there are a few approaches. Um, on the level, on the on a big level, we have the top down approach or the bottom up approach, right? So the top down approach could be, um, you have a vision. Okay, let's say I want to solve someone in half. That's the vision, right? And then work backwards. How do you? What do you actually do to achieve that, right? Or we can do the bottom up approach and say, okay, I know these sleight of hand moves. How do I put the puzzle pieces together to create something at the end, to create something amazing, right? So those are two approaches. Um, here are just two techniques I really, I find that are really cool. Uh, one of them I, I talk about is the opposite object concept. So it's called opposite object. So essentially, how do you take two things that have nothing to do with each other and merge them together? Hmm. So if I said the word magician to you, you mostly probably think of a bunny in a hat, right? Someone, and you think about it, someone hundreds of years ago had their pet bunny, had their hat, said, well, what if I could show something empty and then uh, show something empty, show my head empty and then do some weird magical gesture and then pull a pet bunny, right? Most iconic trick of all time, right? Uh, and then saw someone in half, a saw and a person, probably two things have nothing to do with each other, right? And then my friend, Joel Ward, he does a trick where the, with the wedding ring uh, and a tennis ball, make some a tennis ball, a wedding ring disappear, tennis ball appear. So two things have nothing to do with each other, how do you merge them together? Another cool thing is uh, change one word. So one trick uh, I do in my show is I have someone take out a card, they sign it. I take the card, I throw the cards on a cup that's on stage and their card lands inside the cup. Hmm. If we condense that, if it's card to cup, well, let's just change one word. Rather than the card to cup, why don't we do card to wall? Okay, I throw the cards at the wall, the card gets stuck on the wall, okay. Rather than card to wall, why don't we do card in wall? What if their card gets inside the wall? Okay, well, rather than card in wall, why don't we do phone in wall? What if I borrowed someone's phone, made it vanish, ended up inside the wall, right? So just by changing one word, can, you can develop something brand new. So that's, th those are a few techniques that, that, that I like to use uh, when I try to create new tricks, yeah. I would say the best uh, card reveal that I've ever done probably was, uh, I was at a, a friend's party that was a pig roast uh, and uh, inside it was an actual pig, of course, and there was an apple in the, in the pig's mouth uh, and it, they pulled it out and we took out the apple and inside the apple was the card. That was my, that was my, uh, <laughs> my, my yeah. one uh, trick, uh, not, not for vegans. Um, all right, we have tons <laughs> more questions. Um, some, uh, uh, Eva Jane wants to know, do you have a problem with others stealing the new tricks that you've created? Yeah, that's that's a big uh, debate in the magic industry. Yeah. Um, it and essentially because a lot of times, especially well, when when we're developing tricks, I could create something, and someone else on the other side of the world could create the same exact thing, not knowing that we created the same thing. Um, and it, it it's a case by case basis. Essentially, what it comes down to is that whoever kind of has documentation that they performed at first kind of has the rights. Um, the magician that I really respect is that if they are going to teach a trick, uh, a performer trick, they do credit the other person and say, yeah. you know, it, which, which I, those are really the good, the good magicians out there um, that, that, uh, that, that do that. But yeah, there is a lot of, a lot of times it's kind of like writing a song too, right? Like you're inspired by some other melody, but at, at what point does it become does it become yeah. your own, right? Um, there's a, so I mean, it, when you yeah. read about a trick, oftentimes you know, you're, you're learning it. There's the, and you do this in your book as well. There's a, there's sort of a lineage. Like this is based on this trick, which was modified by this person in this way, and I'm I'm doing this to it. But there's no financial stake. I mean, you you sample yeah. somebody else's song, you owe them some money, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. It's less, it's like how close are you to it? And and it's funny that that you say that because a lot of magicians I've seen them. They, they, uh, a, a trick is performed, right? Let's, okay, so I'll give you an example. So there's a trick out there, you may have seen it, where someone draws a bowling ball on a notepad and then they take the big notepad, they squeeze the notepad, a real bowling ball falls out, right? They, they appear in bowling ball, right? Um, once someone performed that on TV, every single magician started performing that. The same yep. jokes, the same drawing, everything was exactly the same. The weird thing is that some magicians were getting a fantastic reaction and some of them weren't. So hmm. why was this happening? because it didn't fit their personality, didn't fit yeah. their rack, right? So what Kayla Drescher is actually, Kayla Drescher is a really, really well-known magician. And she said, well, what does make me unique? 
well, I am a female and there really aren't a lot of female ma magicians out there. How can I, how can I make this a little bit more unique? So rather than drawing a bowling ball, she drew a pair of heels on the notepad, squeeze a notepad, a real pair of, he pair of heels fell out. And they're called, you know, her show is called Magic and Heels. And that caught the attention of David Copperfield. Now they collaborate together. Uh, cool. So, so essentially, how do you take it and how do you make it your own, right? In, mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense. And there's a, there's, it's a case by case basis, but it's, it's a blurred line that a lot of magicians sometimes, sometimes uh, cross. Yeah. Constantine asks, asks if you still get fooled by other magicians. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, sometimes, you know, if it's, if I go to a show, I love performing shows. And I love seeing things I've never seen before. Right. Yeah. Um, again, if you ask a magician, you know, oh, do you know how all the magicians do their tricks? They're lying to you if they say yes. Right. There are, there are tricks out there yeah. that I, that I don't know how they pull off, but I love it because I, it kind of brings me back to, back to my childhood. Be like, wow, yeah. like I'm part of the audience now. Right. I don't know how it's done. Right. It is. And I, and I love that feeling. Cause I can feel like I'm not a magician anymore. Um, right. I was gonna say, I mean, like most of us are like, how did he do that? But like, we're not actually trying to, Decon well, we're sort of trying to deconstruct. We don't have any chance of deconstructing what's really happening. But for a magician yeah. to watch magic, are you, I mean, it's every little motion being sort of uh, examined for, for what might really be happening? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If, 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 you know, a magician watching a magician, most likely they're watching to try to figure it out. <laughs> right? right. Like it's, a, it's just kind of like, okay, like, oh, he did this move there. He did this move here. Okay. Okay. I don't know how he did this though. Right. You're, um, but so it is hard sometimes trying to be like, okay, I want to watch this to enjoy it, not to try to figure it out, uh, which is hard being, being, being a magician, watching another magician. But, uh, but, but yeah, uh, you know, so, sometimes I'll watch a, I'll watch a trick. Like, okay, I know how he did this part, but how did, how did he do that though? And, and I love that because I want to, it, it, it creates wonder in my, in my head. Right. You know, you know what I mean? So uh, that's, that's what I like, but yeah, I, I get, I get fooled by, by, by magicians. Um, you know, especially if they're doing it for, for a long time, a lot of these professionals uh, that, that do it 24, seven, seven days a week, they, they have a big arsenal of a lot of tricks and uh, it, it's great. It's great to get fooled by another magician. Yeah. Yeah. Marissa has a question, I think, about something that's so central to what you and other magicians do. She wants to ask you to speak about the art of distraction, right? How, how important is, is the art of distraction? And, 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 and I think she uses the term, right, it's, it's the art of distraction. It's just not distracting people. There's an art mm -hmm. to it. Of course, yeah. I think uh, a lot of magic is all about misdirection, right? <laughs> and there's, there's different forms of misdirection, too. So, uh, and I, and I talk about this, this is my research where one form of misdirection, if, if, you know, uh, I'll do something really, really quick right now. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can do this. Right. Um, you just, you just say stop whenever you want. Okay. You just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Okay. Memorize that card. Uh, it. to a space. It's okay if I see it. Right. Okay. right I'm going to put it back in the middle of the deck. If I take the deck right now, did anyone see that's actually in my hand. Oh, <laughs> right. So, so that's a move because I looked up this way. Everyone's eyes naturally go up that way, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that's an example of, uh, of, of movement misdirection, right? Um, of how, how to place your hands, how, where to look and things like that. More, more about um, the, the nonverbal misdirection. Then you have the verbal misdirection, which could be that you know that if you say this line, people are going to laugh, right? Or people... Uh, it, it's just, a, you know, you use humor or an applause as to do something else. So people aren't expecting to, you to do a move or, or anything like that. Right. So, so there's different ways you can do misdirection. Or if I take one thing, I'm putting something away, I grab out something else, I switch something else out. Right. That's another form of misdirection, using an object to help you uh, do that as well. So there's a lot of different ways uh, magicians can use, can use misdirection uh, mm. to, to, to their advantage. Yeah. We have an interesting question from Lama Surya Das who asks about famous people who are seemingly demonstrating psychic powers like Uri Geller of Israel or he says, or uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Sai Baba of India. Mm -hmm. uh, doing, are, they, are they doing magic tricks or are they, he says, or are they accomplishing things we can't possibly understand or explain? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts about people who are, who are um, presenting themselves as, as uh, psychic? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So a lot of people, uh, this is more of a personal be belief for me, because a lot of people due to religious reasons or other things may have a different belief. So I'm not saying this is everyone. This is just my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't believe in that, in that stuff. Uh, I, I know the techniques that they use that can make it seem like that they are 
reading the future or predicting or reading someone's mind or something or something like that. Um, so, so, so yeah, so personally, I don't think, I think they're using different techniques to make it seem like that they are reading your mind, predicting the future. Um, and I, and I know the specific techniques as I do use them in, the, in my show, a lot of magicians use similar techniques to make it seem like we're reading someone's mind, uh, or, or predicting what's going to happen or, or, or stuff like that. So, yeah. um, but, but yeah, but I also do know that a lot of people believe in psychics. It's helped them through personal things like that. It just, so you, so everyone have, can have their own belief systems, but that, that's just mine. Yeah. I, I saw Shin Lim perform and I'm pretty sure he was reading people's minds. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, it, there's no way that he could know some of the things that he knew. Um, so I guess I'm just going to choose to believe it because I can't, I, I cannot figure yeah. out how anybody can, can possibly know what he knew about audience members. Yeah, um, there's there's different techniques that that magicians use. You know, if I if I saw the trick, I could probably figure out what what he did. But again, I don't want to ruin it for other people either. You know, you know what I mean. So I don't want to ruin the magic by revealing yeah. revealing anything. So yeah, you're, you're yeah. teaching us some things, but you're not ruining anything for us. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Today. So yeah. Uh, Mark wants to know about the manual dexterity it takes to perform some of the tricks that you do, because, uh, you know, even even just the thing you just did a second ago with, the, the, you know, having the card like the, or, or, or like a funky split, you know, of the of the deck, like it actually it takes an enormous amount of coordination. It does. Yeah. So uh, a lot of I'm actually a self-taught in a lot of sleight of hand moves. Um, and I know Shin Lim, you just mentioned Shin Lim. He's he's literally ranked the best sleight of hand close-up magician uh in the world like he's won awards he he is he is the master at sleight of hand card magic um but yeah but yeah it, it just takes practice and i think um a lot of people i can do a lot of moves like i can do you know do cool cuts and stuff like that right you know with with cards the issue with that is that i'm not going to do that for a show because then people know i'm good with cards yeah that's a really good point, right? Yeah. And a lot of magicians make this mistake. They'll they'll open up their shows and do some cool moves and shuffle and say, "Okay, now take a card out," and then they reveal the card. And if you think about it, people, if you're doing that to people, they're like, "Well, well, yeah, we know he's good at sleight of hand because he just did." <laughs> right? So sometimes that's so great. Yeah, I'll actually drop cards. I'll mess up or not mess up. I'll it'll look like I mess up on purpose to make it seem like I'm not as skilled as I am. Yeah. 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 Um, so, that, so I'll do that sometime, but yeah, it just really, it just takes, goes down to practice. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of magicians, especially beginners there, it kind of, I went back and, you know, in the beginning, I talked about how some magicians perform too much and they're actually, uh, you know, if, if they're in a park or whatever, they'll want to do magic and they're known as the magician, right. In, in my perspective, you know, I kind of made that mistake, you know, in my town and called, I was known as a magician. If I was going to go back in time, I would actually not do that want people know me for, for me. And then magic is what I do on the side. So some people overperform, um, going back to the question though, that some, magi some beginner magicians, um, are too afraid to do it for the audience to, for an audience member. And that's how the mm. best way to learn is actually performing the moves for an audience member. And then you realize, okay, actually perhaps put my hands this way instead of this way, rather than just doing it in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very patient wife and I'll do things for her a bunch of times. She said, I kind of saw what you did there. It's nice to have somebody to kind of, <laughs> show it too. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned like uh, dropping the cards or, 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 you know, maybe not, you know, showing how great you are, but I'm trying to think, maybe you know who I'm talking about. There's a, there's one magician I saw uh, just video of who, who would just drop the whole deck and he would, he was, it was sort of a mess, you know what I'm talking about? And then he would still come up with the card and it yeah. seemed that much more impossible yeah. and amazing because there's no way he could do that because he just had dropped that entire deck on the floor. You know, it was, it, do you know who, who that, what I'm talking about? There's one guy, God, I can't there's, think of his name right now. There's, there's a few of them. I know um, the amazing Jonathan does something like, he's does great. something yeah. like that. Not who I'm thinking, um, but yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of like my show too. I just, I throw cards everywhere. I, I make it, it's a complete disaster, but it's fun though, because I think a lot of magicians, they, they do match to show people, oh, look what I can do. But I don't, I don't like that approach though. Like I, I want it for all of us to be in this together. You know what I mean? And so, so what I like to do is again, like I, like I said, if I'm doing a trick, I'll do something where it seems like I'm not as skilled as I am, because it's that much better when I do get it right. Right. So it's, a, it's like that weird yeah, psychology right. behind it. Yeah. Yeah. We only have like one more minute left. Can I ask you to do like one last thing for us? Can you, would you show us something real quick before, before we have to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Um, 
Sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's all good. Hey, we'll do this. Uh, actually, uh, just just uh, we'll we'll do the card that uh, everyone can see. So we'll do uh, two of spades here, and let's write your name uh, on it. Yep, got there it. You go. Okay, cool. And we'll do this. So I'll I'll take the card, I'll do it very very carefully, and I'll put it somewhere in the middle of the pack. Just like that, nice and slow. And I'll show you not on the ball and the nine of hearts, right? I'll show you not on top what we have. We have the uh, five of diamonds, right? If I take the five of diamonds very, very carefully, and I'll do this very, very slow. I take it, I rub it right against the mouse I have. Right about now, it goes right into your card. What? There it is. There it <laughs> is. John, Duke, Logan, everybody. John, that was a ton of fun. Uh, it's really great to, to see you do your thing. And it's so nice to get a chance to really chat with you. Um, and again, if people want to, uh, to actually learn more of John's actual tricks, you can get his book, Life, The Perfect Illusion Life. Also, you can get this book um, by, uh, by donating to GBH right now um, in the link that was provided. John, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's really good to be and, and, and good luck with, with everything. Um, and, and thank you to the audience. It was really great to, to have you and all your great questions. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to more of your questions. There were so many great questions, but... Um, please uh, come back and join us for more of these events. Um, thanks so much for being here. And John, thanks to you. Thanks everyone. And uh, as you, as you leave and try to think about how I got this card in this bottle here. <laughs> I'll be thinking about that all week. Yeah. Thanks again. There everybody. you go. Take care. Take everyone. Care.